where the words fake news have come to mean other people's opinions. It is vital to rely on news platform with journalists who have feet on the ground and can report the truth. New York Parrot, a New York-based national and global news outlet, is changing the narratives of media operations. We focus on the news that matters, like seven empowerments, entrepreneurship, finances, health, security, politics and more. We strive to curb violence, racial and economic discrimination, and to promote peace and social economic development of multiculturally diverse world. As we give voice to the people, we also give your business a voice and make it heard. Get your product and services off the ground by advertising on our fast-growing platform. With so much of daily visits to New York Parrot, you can't afford to be invisible to prospective clients on the websites they trust the most. Our posts reach millions of people across the New York state and around the world. Advertising on our new site will unlock an audience of thousands of potential customers on your doorstep. New York Parrot is born to prosperously speak tomorrow for the voiceless. Greetings, my esteemed audience. I am live from New York City. My name is Sheikh Musa Drame. I am your host. The executive producer for this show behind the scene is Muti Olaway. Thank you for continuing to patronize us and continue, thank you for sharing our videos and thank you for watching and thank you for sharing your input. This show is the community organizer show. It is all about community organizing and activism all over the world. As we all know, community organizing has been one of the most effective community change-making elements. Community organizers see what is beneficial and they work, fight hard to bring it to their communities and they sense what is threatening the quality of life and they fight hard to prevent it. So in a nutshell, that's what community organizing is. And that is why this show is dedicated to community organizing for community organizers so that together we can all live in localities that have you know, qual better quality of life, public safety, peace, and neighborly harmonious relationship. So today, the topic of today is really to express, you know, our gratefulness for the recently concluded month of Ramadan. You know, the Ramadan of 2024 here in New York State and New York City in particular has been one of the most gorgeous, neighborly, interactive moment ever. You know, from day one until the Eid celebration, New Yorkers from all stripes, all backgrounds, all walks of life, all faith affiliations, took it upon themselves to making sure that Ramadan will be enriched by the love that we share as New Yorkers. And that was from the beginning until we um, celebrate the Eid. And I thought that it was befitting for me immediately after Ramadan, you know, to dedicate this show to, uh, you know, thanking our fellow New Yorkers, our neighbors from all backgrounds, you know, who made it their business, you know, to visit Muslim quarters, whether it's the masjid or whether it is their homes or whether the places that they gather or whatever it is, or even the place of work, you know, some non-Muslims made it so accommodating to the fasting Muslims that shows the beauty and the gorgeousness of our, you know, diversity in New York City. So, you know, I am very, very grateful. I'm very thankful, you know, for the solidarity zone during the month of Ramadan. And the month of Ramadan is a month of solidarity 
but it's also a month of sacrifice, month of discipline, and month of, you know, retrospection. You know, Muslims who fast, you know, will um, dig deep within their souls, and they will look inward, you know, to analyze the purpose in which they are living. You know, that's why, you know, the more you look inward, the more you can relate to the general public, you know, those who are well off and those who are in the middle and the too many who are barely, barely, you know, making it. And so Ramadan will give us the opportunity to really reflect on the roles that we, the fasting community of Muslims who must play so that we can at least normalize, you know, these inequities and disparities between the haves and half nots. Because once you are fasting, you deny yourself the usual permissible enjoyment of life, then you reflect on the reality of not being able to enjoy them, um, then that will really humble you and it will also make you more realistic about the living conditions of those who are poor and those who have you know uh, um you know less resources for the basic you know sustenance of life so <clears throat> new york made it so beautiful made it so nice made, made it so enticing actually to fast because you know you know because of the neighborly interaction that we've enjoyed. So um, I said to my fellow New Yorkers, thank you, thank you, thank you. <coughs> you know, we acknowledge your fellowship, we acknowledge your neighborliness, and we acknowledge your solidarity, and we acknowledge, you know, the conversations that we've had during Ramadan, and, you know, accompanying us, you know, throughout the month. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, let me, um, you know, give special thank you to our administration, our, you know, our, uh, you know, this mayor, you know, Mayor Eric Adams and his administration and many of the elected officials, whether they are state representatives or whether they are, you know, city council members. You know, New York has opened its doors. Why? You know, for Muslim migrants you know, not only, you know, to be welcomed and embraced and provided, you know, what they need, what they needed, but they went way above of that. You know, um, the mayor, you know, has um, instructed his administration um, to be dutiful to the migrants. Imagine that, you know, these migrants, some states, they call them illegals, they call them liabilities, they call them nu nuisances, they call them, you know, all kinds of abhorrent, uh, you know, labels. But here in New York, the mayor of the city of New York, the biggest, largest, most successful city, you know, instructed his administration, you know, to be hospitable and generous and accommodative to these migrants. And why am I saying this? Because, well, I play a small part to know how welcoming the city has been to it. Uh, I lead religious services for Muslims, for 2,000 Muslims that are placed on Randall's Island, 2,000 Muslims. And every Friday, you know, we hold Juma prayer. And every Friday, you know, these mostly young men and a lot of young women, you know, uh, express their gratitude to the city and they uh, you know even though they're going through the normal realities of being new to a place but nonetheless they recognize you know the the services that this city um you know has been rendering on their behalf especially the religious services you see in the united states it is known as a place of you know church and state you must separate church and state but New York is so homey and so welcoming that whatever faith, whatever culture, you know, whatever ideology that is important to you, you know, you will find it to be very, very easy to practice them. And so this Ramadan, you know, the city 
provided, you know, meals, halal meals, you know, for breaking fast, halal meals for suhoor, the dawn, you know, first breakfast. And they provided, you know, religious services. They, they even provided them, you know, with, with a space to do their tahajjud, their nightly prayers. I mean, everything and anything that these Muslim migrants needed, the city has provided it for them to their satisfaction. These are individuals that in normal situations, people, you know, disregard and, you know, people disassociate themselves with and people don't, are not mindful of their situations in most cases, but not in New York. Not only New York is a sanctuary city, but New York can truthfully call Abrahamic sanctuary. This is where we have the largest Christian, largest Jewish, largest Muslims in the nation, in the nation. So therefore, and you know, they are all happy to be New Yorkers because they can, you know, uh, live and work in New York without compromising their culture, their faith, or anything that they hold dearly. So that's why I said I'm going to dedicate our first show after Ramadan in thanking New York thanking New York, you know, the, this administration, the mayor and every commissioner and the police commissioner and every police chief and police lieutenants and police detectives and, you know, police officers, because they have been, they have been very, very helpful to these migrants and, you know, as, you know, as, 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 as faithful you know, we must always acknowledge those who are rendering good services on our behalf, but more so those who recognize the biblical commandment of being generous and, and, and affording strangers, you know, for hospitality, safety, and generosity, and making them feel at home and being, you know, so nice to them. You know, these migrants, uh, you know, you know, they really are beneficiaries of the generosity of New Yorkers, the taxi paying New Yorkers, and also the administration that embraced them and advocating for the services that the federal government must provide on their behalf. The mayor has been to Washington, D.C., has sent delegates to Washington, D.C., you know, asking Congress and the president to expedite giving these migrants work permits so that they can begin to work to help themselves, help their families, and help our city and state and our national economy. Migrants have always been, you know, the catalyst for economic, you know, spur. I mean, they bring new energy, they bring new innovation, and they bring new commitment, and they bring hard work, you know, to, you know, make our, you know, national e economy you know, uh, to continue to grow and benefit and become, you know, solidified in its position as, you know, being the top in, in the world. So, um, you know, the mayor uh, has been doing that. So, uh, this, this, you know, these are services that we cannot brush aside. We have to acknowledge them and we have to express our gratefulness because that shows you how, you know, godly, you know, uh, these taxi paying New Yorkers are and how um, great the mayor and you know his administration is and also the governor and his uh, and her administration so this is new york this is home to people from all work, walks of life all background this is where diversity this is the capital of diversity you know as you know uh, uh mayor former mayor david dinkin calls calls it uh the gorgeous mosaic the gorgeous mosaic so we're grateful to be New Yorkers. We're grateful to be in New York. And we're grateful to observe Ramadan in New York. And so I just wanted to thank all, um, you know, faith communities, the Christian community, the Jewish community, the Hindu, the Buddhist, the Jain, you know, and, you, and the Sikh, you name it. And everybody in between, you know, you name it, they have shown solidarity with their fellow Muslim New Yorkers. And for that, we said thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, let me come now to some of the activities that we have been embarking on here in New York City. Because since we're grateful to be New Yorkers and we're grateful to be in New York, we have to add value 
We cannot just keep taking, 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 asking, asking, asking. We have to add value, you know, to the quality of New York and the quality of lives of New Yorkers. And on that vein, you know, we have launched um, late last year, November 30th, um, New York Peace Building Commission. And the New York Peace Building Commission is the most innovative grassroots volunteer peace building mechanism ever devised in the city of New York. We will recruit 85,000 volunteer commissioners, 85,000 commissioners who represent people from all backgrounds, all walks of life and all faiths and all cultures and all nationalities and all zip codes uh, and all professions and, you know, uh, so and all lifestyles. Because when you are living in a city that gives so much, then it is incumbent upon you to also be willing to give as much as you can. And this New York Peace Building Commission is a game changer. 85,000 peacemakers in the city representing everybody in everywhere will make a huge impact in how we live in New York City. It will bring peace and public safety. It will bring harmony and it will bring more love and it will enhance how we live as neighbors in New York City. And we want all New Yorkers, regardless of your age or where you live, you know, to, to be part of it. Let's make peace and peaceful coexistence a normal reality in our lives. Let's make war and conflict and hatred, you know, and crime and violence abnormal, rejected, dejected, and never accepted. And this is what New York Peace Building Commission will strive to achieve. A New York that is safe, friendly, nice, and conducive to live and set up enterprises that will be successful. And if you are employee, then you work in, you know, uh, with companies that provide you with, um, with your heart's desire. That's the New York that we all yearning to live in. And that's the New York that New York Peace Building Commission you know, is striving to make a dent in terms of crime and violence. So, you know, with that being said, I want to invite all of you, regardless of what you do, again, you know, you are welcome to be a member and a commissioner for New York Peace Building Commission. And if you have criminal record or you, or you were incarcerated, those will not disqualify. Your past wouldn't disqualify you as a commissioner. However, you know, once you come and then you accept the fact that you want to be a member and you raise your hand and we sworn you in, then from that moment on, what you do and what you say and how you do them and how you say them matters to us a lot. The reason for that is we are peacemakers. Therefore, we must represent peace in our language. We must represent peace in our interaction. We must represent peace in our actions. We must be living peace talking peace and walking peace, meaning that everything about us must be peaceful. Even when violence is, uh, is a necessity, we must do it in a way that everybody know that this was the last result. This peacemaker has done every single thing possible, but at the end, sometimes to maintain peace, you have to utilize violence, unfortunately. That's why our law enforcement carry weapons it's not that they're there to sue and kill people, but sometimes in order to save lives, you have to neutralize those who are, you know, hell-bent on taking lives. Unfortunately, this, this world is very, very crazy. So therefore, no matter how, you know, much we emphasize, you know, living and breathing and walking and talking peace, sometimes you have to say, you know, in order for us to, pre to prevent more violence, then we have to use whatever necessary, you know, to, 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 to end, um, you know, violence. Uh, and, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just giving a realistic uh, scenario because when we said you got to be peace all the time. So what about if somebody is hurting other people, somebody going to school with a gun and you have the ability to stop that with a, with a gun, would you do it? Yes, you would do it and you would be a peacemaker because if not, 
then we'll have mass shooting, you know, crazy individual, you know, with the potential of destroying uh, many, many lives, innocent lives. So therefore, there are times where, you know, physical um, restraint um, and, uh, is a necessity. Sometimes, um, you know, uh, uh, violence is a necessity tool, you know, to prevent m more and worse violence. But only in those cases. Other than that, you cannot be just carrying illegal guns and knives and, you know, hurting people and lying and cheating and robbing people, you know, because you're hungry. Whatever. No, no, no. You will never ever commit crime uh, and justify it. Never. Crime will not be accepted from peace building, um, you know, uh, commissioners. We are the role models in our localities. We are the role models to children. We are role model, you know, to our parents and our spouses and our siblings. We are role models to our classmates and roommates and colleagues. When they see us, they see truth and peace and love. And when they talk to us, they would have no hesitation that whatever they tell us will remain within the confines that they want, you know, uh, they want it to remain. Meaning that we don't betray, you know, we don't gossip, we don't, you know, uh, assassinate their characters, and we don't, we don't do anything to harm them or hurt them or undermine their integrity or bring them down. That is not the job of a peacemaker, especially a commissioner for New York Peace Building Commission. We represent the best of humanity so that we can fight the worst of humanity. That is, in a nutshell, the best description. So if you want to join New York Peace Building Commission, uh, you can begin by going to our Facebook page. And when you go to Facebook page, just search for New York Peace Building Commission, and it will lead you to our page. Then you request to be a member. And from there, then um, you can attend our you know, monthly Commissioner's Day meetings uh the next one will be held on um april tuesday april 30th uh in the evening so those of you who want to join or who want to learn more about you know how to be a member what are the requirements and what are the do's and don'ts and everything else you can come to our face-to-face -face, um monthly meeting uh you know the orientation meeting so this will give us the opportunity to learn everything about the commission and ask all the commissioners and you know and then um when you walk out of there you know there isn't much uh not to know about the commission so all of you are welcome to let's make new york you know a peaceful more peaceful gorgeous more gorgeous friendly more friendly you know new york let's make new york a home you know a conducive home you know not only for the residents and entrepreneurs but even the visitors so Anybody who wants to come to New York, when they get here, let them enjoy their experience because we are New Yorkers. And New York Peace Building Commission, you know, will enable us to do that. So that is one program that has to do with peace building, public safety, and quality of life. And all of you are invited. It doesn't matter what your background is, what your past is. All we care is whether you are New Yorker or not. If you are New Yorker, you qualify. Whatever age. Whatever you do, you know, whatever lifestyle, it doesn't matter to us. Okay, now let's get into the other program that we also, as proud New Yorkers who love New York, then again, our job here is to continue to contribute to that which makes New York the best place. Uh, one of the programs that we're also working on very, very hard is a campaign we call New York Healthy Lifestyle. New York Healthy Lifestyle. You know, um, New York is home to um, so many wonderful medical facilities. So many wonderful medical facilities. Some of the top in the world. And, uh, but yet, um, we are still dealing, you know, with, um, you know, sickness and diseases and ailments that are preventable. And they're costly. They're costing us lives and of fortunes and taxpayers, uh, you know, money, but yet they're preventable. And for those of us who love New York so much, we said, no, we are going to contribute to saving lives and saving taxpayers money for anything that is preventable. And that uh, is one of that was one of the reasons 
why um, you know a New York Healthy Lifestyle campaign was launched by Lifestyle Lifespan. Lifestyle Lifespan is the program that conceived the campaign for New York Health Lifestyle. So we encourage, you know, uh, healthier habits, you know, healthier living, you know, attitude. We, we encourage New Yorkers to adopt healthier lifestyle. If you smoke, we want you to immediately stop smoking. If you drink alcohol, we want you to stop drinking alcohol. But if you must drink alcohol, at least you do it in a moderation so that you will not get drunk or hurt yourself get drunk drive and you know hurt other people or get drunk and do stupid things so you know those who have to drink you know do it in a way that will not interfere with your mental state because the moment your mind is fogged then you are in deep trouble because we are our minds we're not our names and bodies we are our minds and therefore we must maintain mental alertness for as long as we are awake so um you know we we highly encourage you not to drink not to drink but you know again we're realistic this in new york people drink and you know there are a lot of people that depend on you know alcoholic beverage uh, revenue you know to sustain themselves so you know uh, that is on them uh, we uh, muslims we don't uh, uh we're not concerned about alcohol because we don't touch it at all so that's great and also gambling. We want people to stop gambling. You see, a lot of times, you know, uh, the majority of the gamblers are the poorest of the poorest of the uh, poorest, dreaming to change their impoverished condition to instant wealth. This, it will not happen. See, I'm telling you, uh, you know, to be very frank, you know, gambling does nothing more than creating worse conditions and making unrealistic expectations. And you throw your hard earned limited, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, income or resources into somebody else who set up these systems, whether it is online lottery, whether it is casinos, whatever. These are set up to make money. These are investment opportunities. Gambling will take money from the poor people and give it to the investors who already have money. Stop gambling. Stop dreaming of winning. You're not going to win. And by the way, let me tell you, uh, the, you know, the one out of 240 million people who, who actually win, one out of over 200 million, that's the chances, they, they may be uh, fine for a couple of years. But majority of them regretted the day they won the lottery because uh, five, ten years after they win the lottery, their lives became worse than prior to winning the lottery. And that's why lottery does not have any benefit because there's no blessing. You know, you, you, you know, you're collecting poor people's money. It's like a legal robbery. Stop uh, gambling. All forms of gamble you must stop it especially if you're faithful why would you want to gamble so no smoke no alcohol and do not gamble and if you are a person that celebrates your milestones you know in um you know in in, in uh, let's say nightclubs and whatever stop humiliating your soul in going to the clubs where people like your mom and your daughters and your brothers and your sister will be dancing naked don't do it this is not part of healthy lifestyle it is dehumanizing it is very very degrading and no dignified person will ever enjoy a milestone by watching naked people entertain them that is the worst of the that's the animalistic attitude it should never ever be part of it i don't care how much you enjoy it i don't care how much you normalize it I don't care where you live. There has to be dignity. There has to be family value. There has to be some type of value that you can go home and see your children or see your parents and knowing that certain things will never ever be, you know, part of your life. Stop patronizing, dehumanizing attitudes. And now we have so much problem with, you know, uh, sex trafficking. 
and then you all link it to these type of settings. And this is not part of healthy lifestyle. So we want people to maintain their dignity and to protect the others, especially young girls, not use them as subjects. And that is part of what we're also saying. And in addition to that, we want you to begin to, you know, consume healthy diet. You know, stop being used as guinea pig by these Madison Avenue marketing tricksters. You know, they commercialize every junk, every harmful product, but the way they package it is so enticing that it makes it cool, you know, to have it. It makes it cool to eat it, to drink it. But these are killers. And if you do not modify what you put in your body, you will continue to pay the price. That's why I said in the beginning, a lot of these costly and deadly sickness and ailments and disease come from our own consumption. We eat ourselves to death. We drink ourselves to death. We smoke ourselves to death. We drink ourselves to death. And we gamble ourselves to death. It comes from us because the commercials make it so enticing that it is cool. You know, you know, you, you work hard, you get your money, and now you, you know, you want to go, uh, you know, if you're in New York City, you want to go downtown, you want to go here, you want to enjoy it. And there's a place where you can have the best alcohol, you know, everybody smoke like chimney, you can even play, there's a poker next to it, all this nonsense. And some of them, they even have girls and bo boys dancing naked and or half naked, whatever. That's, that's, that's evil talking to you and making evil things, you know, so seemingly fair and nice and cool, but it's not. You are destroying your soul. You are degrading yourself and you are removing every honor out of your system. So we want people to have healthy lifestyle. So eat right, eat organic food, eat fiber and lessen the consumption of sugary and you know, starchy and salty, you know, things that carry no value but have so much harm in them. So we want people to begin to adopt a healthier eating habit. Forget about soft drink. I don't care what name you call it. All soft drinks are not helpful. Eat water. I mean, drink a lot of water, clean water. And if you don't trust, if you think they're clean, boil it. Boil it and drink it. Nothing is more powerful and more healing and more health and healthier to our bodies than water, clean water. Because we are, uh, we are water. We are made of water. So water, drink a lot of water. Forget about alcohol, some you know, sugary drinks and energy drinks and all kinds of gimmicks. Drink water, water, water. And also sleep well, have enough sleep because sleep is one thing that we cannot do without. You know, you can go day to day without uh, eating. Maybe you can go day or two without even drinking. But sleep, if you go two days without sleeping, you will, you will be out of here. So therefore have enough sleep because part of healthy habit is to have enough sleep. sleep. Be disciplined. The time you go to bed, the time you wake up. I know New York City is difficult, but when you have discipline, you do it so you sleep well and and rest when you need to rest you know this place is like 24 or 7 days a week you always have things to go you know places to visit whatever but you know take some rest take some rest. have some downtime and you know quality family time and time for yourself where you completely relax even your muscles it's like a yoga thing everything is relaxed nothing intense let it loose just by yourself this way your mind can travel and through that then you can begin to invent you know because inventors that's how they do it you know they you know in a situation that they uh, found no solution and create a solution or you know in their downtime where they can think how they can improve their surroundings and everything else so have downtime don't just keep going and going and going whatever even if you have family you know sometimes you just have to have to, your time for yourself and now um, if you are a faithful prayer one of the most not one of the most, actually the most powerful 
way of maintaining sanity, maintaining your health, and maintaining strong, positive mental attitude is praying. You know, when you pray, you know, let me tell you something. You know, I'm a Muslim, you know, uh, who prays uh, all the prayers. But uh, two years ago, uh, we were invited um, for, for an event in Co-op City. And I never forget this. And when I went there, a Christian pastor opened with prayer and asked all of us to stand up. And we stood up and, 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 and she was praying. And I felt it as a Muslim. It was a Christian prayer. But the, but, the, but the tone of the prayer and the tranquility and everything got into me and I felt it. So if as a Muslim who felt the power of Christian prayer, imagine now, you know, uh, my own prayer. And that's one thing. I, you know, the first time also I went to the Holy Land, I went to Israel a, lot, a couple of years ago. You know, um, you know I, we, we were visiting, um, you know, uh, different places and then at the end everybody had their downtime i decided to go to the to the western wall um and, and a little bit and then after that then just walk, walk into the masjid because it's the same building the western wall and masjid aqsa same building so i went to the western wall watching the traffic and everything it was beautiful all of a sudden around the sun was setting all of a sudden um to my right i hear you know this horn this uh, somebody's blowing the horn, uh, um, you know, uh, um, alerting uh, the uh, the arrival of Sabbath. I've never felt, you know, that deep, deep, deep uh, connection to it. I it was, it was so gorgeous, uh, you know. I, I listened to it until it's finished, and I felt like I was one of those that, you know, the rabbi was calling. So, if again, if as a Muslim, you know, hearing this you know, horn being blown to alert people for Sabbath, if that impact it has on me and the Christian prayer, imagine my own prayer. Now, same thing with, you know, with others. So prayer is very, very important because, you know, it keeps us um, a check, um, you know, to understand that we're here uh, for a short period of time and we're here just to accumulate as much goodness as possible, but we're not here for, 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 uh for for eternity and that's what prayer does so these are all part of you know health lifestyle so for, for us muslims you know ramadan we just fasted the whole month i mean it was the most uh, you know beautiful uh, uh you know uh, occasion where you can practice healthy lifestyle so you know uh even if you even if you don't have faith uh, you know meditate meditation has nothing to do with faith or yoga you know these are all things that just make you you know relax and you know, uh, uh, um, you know, taking it in and, you know, the oxygen, you know, that we, you know, we sometimes, you know, take for granted. Imagine the time where you can no longer breathe on your own and you have to be hooked up on the machine. So prayer, you know, allow you to understand all these things. Last but not least, no violence, no crime, no oppression, no abuse, and no hatred, no discrimination, because when you have healthy lifestyle, uh, um, uh, um, you know, attitude, you will never ever cause another person not to have healthy moment. Therefore, the most important part of it is to be, uh, to be non-violent so that you will not cause other people not to have healthy lifestyle. Because when people are, you know, violated or they are hurt or they are attacked, then they cannot have healthy lifestyle. So we encourage all of you, you know, to join our New York Healthy Lifestyle Campaign. And if you want to join us, you can go to lifestylelifespan.org. Lifestylelifespan.org and become a member. Everything is free. And, you know, help us promote health. For example, April, the month to which we are in, is a National Minority Health Month. April is National Minority Health Month. And guess who suffers most from unhealthy lifestyle? Minorities. Because the health disparities, you know, due to, you know, racism and due to, you know, segregation and redlining, in addition to unhealthy lifestyle that have been, you know, normalized in the minority communities, unfortunately, makes us um, victims of, of, of ourselves, ourselves and the injustice of society. But 
you know, that's another conversation. I'm just focusing on healthy lifestyle as a personal attitude, you know, toward improving the quality of your life. So these are the two campaigns that we really want you to be part of because they're all important for us, important for New Yorkers. The first one is peace building community, peace building. The second one is New York Healthy Lifestyle, which is lifestyle lifespan, New York Health Lifestyle. This is my message for this show today. And once one more time, I want to, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, thank you for always watching and sharing these videos and, you know, sharing your views and, you know, patronizing us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I look forward to our next show next Sunday. God bless you all. Bye. In a world where the quality of information available to poorer communities is doctored, tainted and sometimes regressive, where the world's fake news have come to mean other people's opinions. It is vital to rely on news platform with journalists who have feet on the ground and can report the truth. New York Parrot, a New York-based national and global news outlet, is changing the narratives of media operations. We focus on the news that matters, like seven parliaments, entrepreneurship, finances, health, security, politics and more. We strive to curb violence, racial and economic discrimination, and to promote peace and social economic development of multiculturally diverse world. As we give voice to the people, we also give your business a voice and make it heard. Get your products and services off the ground by advertising on our fast-growing platform. With so much of daily visits to New York Parrot, you can't afford to be invisible to prospective clients on the websites they trust the most. Our posts reach millions of people across the New York State and around the world. Advertising on our new site will unlock an audience of thousands of potential customers on your doorstep. New York Parrot is born to provide